Young lovers, Gina Allen and Brandon Day, are on a day trip from hell. Lost in a freezing mountain wilderness with no way out. We're stuck. We're completely stuck. You make a mistake, probably will die. No, Mom, of course I will. We met in the spring of 2006, and within a couple of weeks, went on our first date. And um, a few days later, he asked me to go with him to California. <laughs> I had qualified to go to a national sales convention. I'm a financial advisor. Uh, I was allowed to bring a guest with me and thought uh, it'd be a really good time and uh, invited her out with me. At the end of the convention, Brandon and Gina head out on a day trip to a nearby beauty spot. The couple dress light. Um, I'm gonna leave my purse here so maybe you could take these for me. His pocket's full. Brandon leaves his mobile behind. We were only gonna be gone a couple hours, or I guess so we thought. Among the most rugged wilderness regions in the US, Mount San Jacinto is the second highest peak in Southern California. With no access road, the only way up or down is by cable car. And while temperatures can hit the 80s and 90s on the desert floor during May, the summit is still dusted with snow. It was totally perfect. Um, and I guess you just think, you don't have a care in the world at that point. What? What is it? You hear that? Sounds like a waterfall. <laughs> Unused to this kind of environment, the city dwellers from Dallas, Texas, don't realize that the mountain is playing acoustic tricks on them. While the sound of the waterfall seems nearby, it is actually rebounding off the hard rock walls and echoing around the mountain. We eventually did find the waterfall, which was not impressive. We took some pictures, which didn't, which didn't turn out very well, and, and just, then decided to turn back. Gina and Brandon have 20 minutes to meet their tour party at the cable car station, but going back the way they came is not easy. We could hear voices, but we couldn't really match up with them. Meanwhile, the rest of the tour party has descended without Brandon and Gina. Despite Brandon's determination to find the mountain station, the dense pine forests and steep rock faces block their path. And so at that point, we decided, OK, we, we have to start yelling for help. Hello! We're too short. Must have taken a taxi back. The most immediate danger for Brandon and Gina is hypothermia. Lightly dressed, they're at the mercy of the plunging mountain temperatures, which can drop well below zero at night. I really felt responsible. It's one thing to put yourself in a bad situation, but to put somebody else in a bad situation um, is, is tough to stomach. Well, that night, yeah, it really got to a level cold that I've never experienced before. Brandon and Gina survive a long, cold night in their makeshift shelter. Exhausted, they've had nothing to eat or drink in the last 24 hours. In my mind, I'm going through a checklist, OK? There's a series of fail-safes. You know, first off, the, the tour bus had a head count and, and a list of names. So they would have known we didn't make it back on the bus. At dinner that night, you know, some people from my firm would have noticed we're not there. Unfortunately, the fail-safes have not triggered a search. With the convention winding down, Brandon's work colleagues have not noticed their absence. Brandon and Gina climb further up the mountain, thinking they need to go higher to reach the cable car station. They're in for a shock. Oh my God. There's no sign of the station. Gina and Brandon now realize they've crossed to a different ridge of the mountain. See that creek? That creek running there? We made the decision that we're gonna try and walk, walk our way out of here. We're going to try and follow the uh, mountain river, and it has to lead out somewhere. What Gina and Brandon don't realize is that between them and the river is some of the most treacherous terrain the mountain has to offer. We slid on our butts, I guess, with one leg straight out in front of us, the other leg bent up. You know, if we make a mistake, we're either dead or we're hurt to the point to where we probably will die. The mountain is too steep and treacherous to climb back up. Brandon and Gina are now committed to sliding down the rest of the rock face. Four or five o'clock, we finally make it to the bottom. Under normal circumstances, 
getting wet would be an inconvenience. But with night approaching in the cold mountain environment, it could spell disaster for Brandon and Gina. Instantly, I'm soaked you know, from the uh, uh, thighs down. In wet clothes, Brandon is now at real risk of hypothermia. And she sat on my feet throughout the night uh, trying to keep, help keep them warm. Their hotel computerized booking system has automatically checked them out. But the rooms have not been made up. So no one knows they're lost in the mountains. They've been driven on by grit and sheer determination. Then suddenly, signs of life appear in the distance. All of a sudden, you get this feeling of, oh, I think we made it. Brandon and Gina realize this is not your average campsite. Stuff had been buried a little bit by dirt. We don't hear anybody. We don't see anybody. It's just a very ominous feeling. So we start going through the, the, the bag, the contents of the bag. We're discovering um, these maps, and there was obvious writing in the white space. This is today. This is May 8th. Someone's oh, here. We're gonna no, Gina. It's May 8th, 2005. How have we found this exactly one year ago to the day? May 8th, 2005. Took a fall. Too weak to climb out a canyon. Down is gorge. No way out. May 11th. I'm 60 today. Here, May 14th. Heading down to Creek for water. Goodbye and love you all. To go from such a high to such a low uh, in such a short amount of time was just something that uh, shakes you. In digging through all of his cards, I see um, his name is, is John Joseph Donovan. Um, at that point, I took his bag and I gathered up everything I could because in my mind, that's somebody's dad. And somebody's dad didn't come home. For Gina and Brandon, the horror story they find themselves in <laughs> It's unrelenting. Who is What? Who's... Again, the water gets us every time. And that's where we see uh, the gorge that uh, John had talked about. We are completely stuck. He had the maps, he had the compass, he had everything. And he couldn't get out. So how the hell are we? But the missing hiker, John Donovan, has left Brandon and Gina a lifeline. When I was gathering water from this pool, I did see, I did notice something out of the ordinary, something that didn't seem right. I think, really, maybe part of me knew what it was, but the other part of me didn't want to know, at least not at that point in time. That's when I, I made the decision, I'm going to light the whole place on fire. And it took much faster than, than I anticipated. It burned for about 45 minutes or so, uh, produced a great deal of smoke. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, and the thought was, I mean, they have, to, they have to see this. And now about an hour's gone by, and, and it was the most uh, beautiful sound that we'd ever heard, because <laughs> coming up from the valley floor is that sound of a helicopter. I think uh, <laughs> we both would have cried if we had tears, but we're both so dehydrated, <laughs> we didn't have enough moisture <laughs> in our body to, to come up with tears. But, uh, you know, the, the, <sighs> the pure joy of knowing you're, you're gonna make it out. We're just so thankful to John Donovan. Certain people just have a way of uh, leaving their mark. John Donovan's remains were recovered three weeks later. The Navy veteran was buried with full military honors. Gina and Brandon stayed together for two years after the ordeal and then separated. <laughs> 